This is the Pixie Inside process tutorial for color calibration. You find it in process, color calibration and color calibration. Even we have today much more advanced color calibration tools in Pixie Insight, like the photometric color calibration or the spectrophotometric color calibration. There are still moments where we have to do it in the old fashioned way. And even in the manual of the spectrophotometric color calibration, it's actually mentioned that, for example, if you do Hubble palette, you should do it manually with this tool and not with these advanced tools. So from that point, it's a good thing that we have a detailed look at this tool, how it works and what options it offers. And it actually offers three options how you can do color calibration. The first one is manual white balance. And it is what it says, it's manual. For example, I feel that's too much red. Well, I take some red away, throw the triangle over there, and it's exactly what happened. The red goes away. So I would say, while this is definitely not the way how to color calibrate, it can be done for some slight adjustments if you feel that you want to have the color calibration a little bit in the different directions than the official tools are proposing. Just know that there is then no sound basis anymore on what the color is. It's your personal taste. With that, let's go to the second tool and the one which is most often used. And that is structure detection. So how this is working is that it looks at all the stars in your picture, averages the color, and that's the white reference. And that usually is a very good guess. So for that, we have first of all to activate it. We can actually select here output white reference mask, which is quite interesting to see how many stars it actually took for this averaging process. And it should be as many as possible. Last but not least, we should have a background reference. For that, we look at a place, for example, here where there's only background. We're creating a preview. And now here we can actually state region of interest from preview. We choose this preview. Okay, and that's done. Now we're ready. We throw the triangle on there. This here is the star mask. So we see a lot of stars have actually been used. That's good. We can close that. The other is now the color calibrated image. Looks terrible, but when we restretch it, everything's fine again. If I look at it, most likely it has taken a little bit red away. But the star look colorful. This one is reddish. These ones are bluish. So it definitely has actually taken that into account. Looks good. So as stated, this is the method that you use most of the times. But there is another way and let's now have a look at this one. For that, I'll take a star cluster. Now what you can do is you can state that this star cluster, this is actually a white reference. And what we're, what we're doing for that, we have now to create two previews. One is a preview of this star cluster. You can just take here the center. The second preview as before has to be the background. So for example, here we have a nice patch of pure background. With that ready, we go down the process again, deselecting structure detection. Now here in the white reference, we can say region of interest. We take the preview one. And in the background ref reference, we also say region of interest. And we choose the second preview. Okay. And with that, we're ready. And that is how it has it done. So it's less yellowish now, as it probably should be, as not all the stars are yellow, but it has still some yellow stars in here. Also from that, we have now a nice distribution between yellow stars and blue stars. So that looks that it has done it accurately. Also here, destruction detection might have done it the same good as the white reference. So in pictures like this, with huge galaxies, huge star clusters, it's trial and error. You can try both, which one ever, 
gives you the best results. Obviously, if you don't anyway want to go with one of the other PCC or SPCC variants. But there you could use both. With Nebulos, you can only use the structure detection as you don't have a huge dense mass of stars which you could use as a white reference. So short and sweet, this is all there is to say about the color calibration. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give me a like and press the subscribe button below. See you next time and clear skies.